all done. All right, perfect. All right, here we are with Phil W1PJE in the solder smoke shack <laughs> with Dean KK4DAS. Yes, indeed. And we're we're just gonna we've been talking radio and space and and what what a privilege it is to have the director of the Haystack Observatory here with us. And we we told stories. I told I told Phil about the other. Um, kind of observatory directors that I've met over the years. He is by far the coolest, Aww. I must say, I must say. So, uh, and we've also been talking about mechanical filters. He yep. is a builder of the direct conversion I receiver am. that Dean and I put. He's a member of the, the Solder Smoke Direct Conversion Hall of Fame, which by the way, Dean invented out of whole cloth. Yep. But it's it's a it's and a great required thing. proof of life to be proof. Of life. <laughs> he he submitted proof I, of life. I did. I wasn't going to say it was done until I had. I'm an experimentalist. What can I say? Truth truth be told, we probably would have inducted him into the hall no, even no, no, without no, the no, proof of no, life. No. But he insisted on doing it the right way. You know that's science. You got it. You got to <laughs> prove what you're doing. <laughs> anyway, we're really glad to have you here. Oh, uh, it's it's a, it's a pleasure to visit the. Hallowed Hall here. This is, this um, is a hallowed hall. In all of its glory. Um, yeah, no, it's it's been, to tell you the truth, um, even though I'm a, a professional person and, you know, I work with large transmitters and we do all sorts of radio science, this is different and this is very deeply satisfying because it's simple enough that it should work, but it's challenging enough that sometimes you get interesting puzzles and i like puzzles and so it was a real nice change of pace for me and so well, little of what we do in the professional side of our lives really yes is hands on anymore and you get to a certain point in your career Completely. and you say well i used to work for a living right yes exactly but and I, I was speaking to a group of hams in nebraska this just this week and i was explaining to them a little bit about what you just said about the challenges and i i, I came up with a quote that we used with the high school students when we were talking to them. I don't think they really got it, but it was it, it said a lot. It was it was a it was a paraphrase of what John F. Kennedy said about when he launched the, the, the flight to the moon. He says, We do these things not because they were easy. We right. do them because we thought they would be easy. <laughs> <laughs> which which by the way, anybody out there it's no different in the professional world than the amateur <laughs> world. It's the story of our lives. But one, one thing I think we've been surprised by is is how much difficulty people have had. It it, it is it is a and it's not we're not talking bad about them. No, it's just that it's harder than it looks. So this came up. We were talking recently about whether the the Soviets trained their agents to build radios, mm -hmm. and I said, while well, theoretically possible. Based on our experiences with these radios, probably not a regular thing that they would do. Yep. So, and because it is, it is, it, we do it because it's it, not because it's easy, but because we thought it would be. Easy. <laughs> just, well, you know, you can go all the way back to Marconi and people sitting there scratching their chins and say, "Did they really hear the letter S there?" We're still, still worried about that. You know, um, and the question is, maybe the second time they did it, and well, okay. That's good enough, but you know, there's always that I want to, I want to be there first kind of thing. I know, I know. And and you know, but but uh, it's been really great also to see all these people who are not professional radio people at all saying, ah, I'll dive in, I'll give it a try. And and many of them have succeeded. Yeah. Right? And it's been it's been been a lot of fun. We were just talking that just this morning we had the first contact involving. Uh, two stations that are that both of them are using the solder smoke direct conversion receiver my station and I was talking to K1OA up in Massachusetts and so that was that was a kind of a kind of a good moment for us I he, think I think went, go ahead. I was gonna say I think Pete has mentioned you know tuning around and trying to contact somebody and they say what are you using and he says home brew and there's this hmm? <laughs> oh, on the other end of the plane. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's that? I didn't think people did that anymore. Or else they'll tell you, go to go to menu to item number 35 and change from 4 to 6. Or after they hear you're on homebrew, they'll say, well, it sounds pretty good for a homebrew. Uh, I, 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 listen, I have to say, I, I, I actually actually did the reprisal. The, rep, the, 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 the reprisal that we had in mind for that. And I come back to him and I said, well, your signal sounds pretty good for an icon. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'll tell you something about this project that's been really nice is you build, you know, you end up winding the thing yourself, right, on a 3D printed form, 
and it's remarkably stable. It is. And yeah. it means that all of that business about you're drifting all over the place, you've partially answered that and you, you can still build it with yourself. We, 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 and we, Dean and I have, have emphasized that this is not a toy, that it's actually no. a receiver that you could use. And it's not just me working on these little CW contacts. We've had several others uh, who've gone out and worked double side. One guy, the, the guy with the frying pan receiver. Oh, I that remember that. That was terrific. He changed it into a direct conversion receiver, <laughs> transceiver, yep. and worked Idaho from California. Perfect. I mean, this, is, this is terrific stuff. So the the other thing that has been gratifying for me is the comments we get from some of the guys who have built, who have never built anything before. Some guys have been hands 30, 35 years, yeah. and they're saying, I always wanted to do something like it, but I never thought I could do something like this. And, you know, opening up the door to what, for us, is a, a tremendously valuable part of the hobby. Yeah, and, and also, I think it, it's, been, it's been very gratifying to have people come back and say, I had my doubts about you making this a homebrew project and not a kit, but right. now I get it. I, I'm really glad that I built this thing instead of just assembling a board and stuffing a board with components. And, and since you, you're starting from raw elements, you can, it, there, there's no like, oh, I don't know how they put the board together. No, you, you did it yourself. Or I don't know what's going on inside the IC because it's it's all discrete transistors. I appreciated that very much. And even the challenge of, oh, the thing's taking off on me, right? How do I quell that? Well, you learn a lot just from figuring that part out. You learn a lot from that. And not only that, we've told people that even if it was a nice, neat IC chip like an LM386, <laughs> they take off too. Of course, <laughs> of course. No, that's been very good. And I, I've noticed on your Discord channel that also, even getting some people though to just say, no, just build it like we build it like we designed it first, right? And then go ahead and twiddle and modify. I, 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 I finally got around when I wrote the getting started page to put a paragraph in there that said, all right, this paragraph is for everybody else, the electrical engineers and the experienced builders out there. who are gonna tell us there's a more optimized circuit for this, there's a better way of doing that. You can have lower noise that. I said, Bill and I know this and we don't care. Yes, that's right. <laughs> we did this on purpose. <laughs> and again, I was trying to explain the project to the group of hams from, from Nebraska who were really very nice. And I said, look, early on, we got a lot of comments from guys and they almost always began with the words, you should, oh, yes. and you should use this circuit, you should do that, you should. And we, we came to the conclusion that each one of these suggestions was probably correct. They would probably contribute in some small way to yep. improving the signal quality from the receiver, but they would vastly increase the, the complexity of the, of, the, of the circuit and make it we were thinking that when we started it with, how are we going to explain this to the high school kids? And if, as soon as you, for example, put in feedback amplifiers, then you've got to explain the whole concept of feedback. Yep. And then you just say, forget it. Go with the simple the simple. This is amplifier. why there are no um, PNP transistors in our ah! circuit. There's only NPNs <laughs> and one FET. And even that was a question. Should we just put a, should we just put an NPN of, uh, uh, stage oh, in for the buffer for the buffer, which oh, we could have, yeah. we could have, but we decided to go with 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 the Fed. It gave us a different circuit to talk about to the high school kids. But but even that, it's like all right, we wanted to minimize it as much as possible and still and still make it, it make it sound good. I did point out to one of the guys who was being relentless that um, between Bill and I, and particularly if you had in Pete, mm -hmm. no one else in the world has built more of these receivers and transceivers that we have combined. You, you, Nobody. Yep. And, and it, you know, <laughs> so we actually know what we're doing. <laughs> how many times did you guys, how many times did you guess that you've rebuilt this circuit now? Oh, my gosh. Well, well, I, I have one here. I have this one here. Right. I have one in the Dominican Republic, and I have found remains of two or three here in the shack. Today. Okay. So probably four or five. And that's not counting the development process, right? Sure. I mean, because then, yeah. then there's, right. Yeah. Other... After, after we got it complete, uh, I built one as the, as the demonstration of this one that's on the, all the videos that I showed to the high school kids yeah. saying, this is what we're going to build. Then I built one along with the high school kids. And then I built one along with the Discord group. Sure. That's where my videos came from. Of course. Right? So there's at least three or four of them that I've built since it's, it's, it's been okay. refined. And, and yeah, so you, you end up 
<laughs> you do a project like this, you end up you end up having a lot of forty meter direct conversion receivers. <laughs> and just just one one reason, one of the other reasons that we told people to build it the way we wanted, the way we had designed it, was was not really out of a sense of of snottiness on our part. Oh, there may have been that part of the element too. We we both may, may have had that. With, okay, look, we've been through that. Let's let's do it this way. But also there was a practical element of it too. In that in that. It would be impossible for us to kind of coach somebody who had built a receiver that was just radically different. Yeah. And some of the proposals we got early on were pretty radical. It's like, <laughs> I'm going to build your receiver, but I'm going to build it for a different band. I'm going to use an SI5351 LM386 chip, and uh, the mixer is going to be uh, a Taylor mixer. But it's going to be yours, okay? <laughs> We, like, we, we actually did have to tell one or two of the guys that we couldn't help them because they hadn't actually built the receiver that we designed. Yep. Right? And it's like, I, there's a place for that on the internet, but this wasn't it. Right? <laughs> the whole point of this was everybody, it's a group project, everybody build the same thing. Yep. That way we can have this dialogue between each other. And the other thing about having everybody build the same circuits is when it comes time to, all right, now it's built, now I want to make it sound better. What do I do? So now there's discussions about, well, do I want an right. audio filter in? Well, we know where to plug the audio filter in because all the circuits are identical, right? So, yeah, yeah. So, but, but anyway, it's been, it's, it's been great, great fun. So, Phil, tell us a little bit about the Haystack Observatory. Ah, okay. And, I mean, I really appreciate what the, the kind of historical material that you sent to my Right. Back. So, some of you have seen on the blog that, that our founder, who is still with us, believe it or not, um, he's, uh, he's still out there. But, uh, yeah, we started life as a uh, sort of a development uh, for radar. Um, you know, in the, in the days after World War II, when radar was a really critical part of what was going on, the idea was to go to higher and higher frequencies because you could do different things with radars. You could make radars that had narrower beams and had a little bit more fidelity. And at some point, you need a place to put up large antennas and loud transmitters where there wasn't anybody. And so where we are kind of along Route 495 in, in Massachusetts, and this, this blows people's mind who live in Boston. I said, this is where people came to spend their summers out of Boston. This is where their summer homes were. Route 128, the inner ring road was, had been, was five years old and Route 495 was somebody's memory 20 years beforehand. So this was a great place to, to go. And we're on a little hill so we could see to the horizon in either direction. So if you're trying to test a radar that can detect things at long distances, this is a good place to go. So gradually, one radar showed up, and then another one showed up, and what you realize, as with the many, many other things, is that when you build something, you can use it for more than one purpose, if you understand its capabilities, right? So you may have built this thing to do radar, but if you turn off the transmitter, it's a really good radio astronomy device. So people who knew that started borrowing it, and then suddenly you can do science with something that wasn't necessarily designed to do science. And so the thing that our, about our observatory that's kind of uh, unique, more unique these days, is what you want, you want the people who know about the technology, and then you want the people who know about the applications, right? What I can do with it. And if you have some of those people who know about both, then the ideas start flowing, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can say, oh, I can take that thing and use it for this, and just like we were talking about, oh, and then I could tweak it a little bit and do this with it. And so it becomes a little hub for people kind of designing new things. And the, th the other thing I will say is that because radio astronomy and looking at the atmosphere and figuring out what the Earth is doing is, ult is inherently a global um, enterprise, you can't do it alone. You need to collaborate. And that's another thing that... I relate to even from what you guys have done already with this project is it's a community, right? It is. And it's a global community. We have people who have built a, built a receiver in Indonesia, in Bali, in New yep. Zealand, Australia, Tasmania, all around the world. But I got to say, talking about the dish that you have, the yes. Haystack, I, I put on the blog that before we heard about Haystack, by far, our favorite dish in the world <laughs> was Fox. The oh, Fox Radio yes. Telescope. The dish. The, the, That's it right. started its own movie. But I must say, 
now I, I have my doubts. I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning towards Haystack. No money was exchanged for this conclusion. <laughs> None. Um, so that endorsement. If yeah. You something. The sign of smoke endorsement. I know. I, I'm, I'm going to get a. We're gonna, we need a sign, right? I need to put a brand on the along with a coffee jar so that people can throw their their quarters in there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's very um, it's. One of the things, I'll, I'll, one of the other things I'll just mention about, and again, I could make all sorts of parallels between the things that are happening in this room and in the community is that um, you get ideas, right? You're building something and then you get ideas for something else. And um, what you realize is that underneath it, at a certain level of technology, it's all the same. Yeah. It's how do I get a radio wave from here to there and how do I pick it up once it's gotten to where it wants to go? The rest of it is layers on top of that. Well, this is this is one of the main ideas behind the architecture that we used in this receiver. Yep. And this comes from our good friend, Ashar Farhan, VU2 ESE in Hyderabad. He made the point, he said, with just four circuits, yep. a filter, an oscillator, an amplifier, and a mixer, if you understand basically how each of those four work, You've got all the radio right there. Yep. That's it, and 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 you could just all all other radios, certainly all other hardware radios, the software defined radios may get a little bit more complex, but hardware defined radios, in any case, you you can figure it all out right there with those four. So double conversion, yep. two mixings, two IFs. Yep, that's you it. know, um, it, it it's blocks, right, and it okay. starts to look like blocks. And that's one of the, one of the reasons that we wanted them. To people to build the circuit in four different boards and then, you know, troubleshoot them, yep. make sure they work and then put them all together. And most of the time that worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like many after, things after, you, after you build a few of these things and you start getting used to kind of the way these circuits work, you do realize that they are all the same, right? Yep. So if you look um, at the inside of any free software defined radio, any analog radio, you're gonna see the circuits and if you've looked at our schematics, you'll start to recognize, oh, that's an amplifier, that's a filter, that's what a yep. mixer looks like. You'll see those, you'll see those subs, even though they're not well laid out in the schematic, you'll be able to recognize them and you'll be able to follow where, where yep. things go. And then it's like reading a piece of music or reading yeah. a book is that the, the structure starts to take form, exactly. Yeah. But as you said, you just gotta stare at that for a little while and have people who can help you through looking at where the blocks are completely. All right. Well, Phil, thanks very much for coming. Thanks we're, for the honor. We're, we're, we're going to hang out and look at the stuff in the shack here in the morning. We still got to check out the Drake 2B and the HG37 over there. I have to, I have to touch them so I can go home. And, <laughs> and then I can put my hands on our other equipment and transfer some of it over. Well, we had, we had a ceremony that took place at one of the hand fests. It was called the Mojo Transfer. Right. <laughs> yep. And the Mojo Transfer was transferred into my DH40. I think so. Well, thanks very much, Phil. Thank you. And thanks for coming by. Absolutely. Thank you. Pleasure. Absolutely. My honor. All right, let me turn this thing off. I hope we got, oh, look, 17 minutes, 57 seconds. Excellent.